Welcome back to Newswire. Golf season is wrapping up. NFL season is getting ready to get started. Brady Cannon's got his eyes on both. We'll see if we can hit both here on the show. Brady, great to have you back here on Newswire. And and look, I, I mean, we're almost here for the NFL season. Naturally, college is underway and some huge games this weekend, by the way. A lot of fun there. But, uh, you know, Thursday night next week, Friday night next week, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday night. Uh, we got a lot of football ready to go here. Here we go. Yeah, it kind of kicks off this weekend right here in Las Vegas with LSU and USC. You mentioned the college football season underway. I'm fired up for that. The golf season winding down. Unfortunately, this last event is kind of a dud for me, the Tour Championship. You know, the Tour Championship is supposed to be for all the marbles, and it's just anticlimactic. I like Xander. I think he's going to get it done. He's really a horse for this course. But yeah, we're transitioning to football for sure. And we're all fired up here. You, like you uh, mentioned there before you went to break, Craig, the contest show that we've got here airing on Sports Grid. Contest season is in the air in a fever pitch here in Las Vegas. So, yeah, it's all coming together for the NFL to get started. Yeah, and, and a great game to start with on, on Thursday night. Of course, the Chiefs are going to open up in the first game of the season. Three-point favorites, though. That's not a lot over the Baltimore Ravens in game one. And, look, if this was a Super Bowl, I think it'd be pretty easy to just say, grab your money line in the Chiefs and go about your business. But it is the first week of the season. Do you have any position early on on the uh, Chiefs or Ravens or the total in this? I have not made a bet yet on this game, and I'm not sure if I will. I think there are some games I like a little better so far in week one. Um, But there are some two and a halfs out there still, and, and quite a few of them really, Craig. Uh, If you're going to bet this game, I prefer the Chiefs side, but don't make a bad bet and lay the three. I think there are two and a half you can find, and maybe you'll find another two and a half before we get closer to game time. I think the Ravens are actually going to regress this season. You look at what they did. I mean, that game, the AFC Championship game against the Chiefs, was one of the worst game plans I've ever seen. Everybody in the entire world knew that the Ravens, with their fourth best rushing attack in the NFL, going against the 28th worst run defense in the NFL, we're going to run the ball down the Chiefs' throats, right? No. Monken decides to get cute and try and throw the ball 60, 70% of the time. How'd that work out? Um, And now you lose a lot of offensive starters and depth on that offensive line. I think wide receiver is still an issue. You know, Lamar Jackson, for the first time in a while, started every game that meant something for the Ravens last year. Now, you hope that happens again, but will it? It has not necessarily been the case in years past. Uh, And then you look at also some of the numbers for the Ravens. They were plus 12 in turnover margin, plus 19 in sack margin, and plus Mm. 4 in penalty margin. Those things typically regress towards the mean. Yep. Derrick Henry, uh, you know, it looks fun it looks fancy on paper, but he's also 30 years old. He ain't what he used to was. I, I think things slip for the Baltimore Ravens. And we usually see this where the Chiefs beat you when it counts, but then you know their opponent returns the favor in the regular season. I'd lay the two and a half if I could find it here with Kansas City. I, I think they yeah. improve actually, uh Craig. I, I think I mean last year was the year to get the Chiefs. You think about it, there was a time, six, eight weeks left in the season where they didn't look very good at all, right? Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to be better this year. Yeah, I, I didn't realize. Maybe, maybe uh, Lamar Jackson didn't play in a game, but is that right, that the, the Chiefs haven't played the Ravens in the regular season since 21? Is that, is that accurate? It seems, it seems like a long, yeah. long time. I, I don't yeah. know if that's correct, but I, it, it feels like the, the Ravens beat them a few years ago, and it probably was 21. Uh, yeah. with Lamar Jack- and they played I want to say game one game two game three it was very early in the season and, and yeah. I think the Ravens got them in a real tight one but I, I yeah. think the tables will be turned here I, Kansas City I talked about some of the numbers for the Ravens Kansas City not only made the playoffs but won the Super Bowl being minus 11 in turnover margin and minus 23 in penalty margin that's wow. amazing and you figure yeah. that's got to improve this coming season yeah, flips a little bit at the very, at the very least. I mean, those numbers are usually what regresses uh, to the mean, as you said. All right, how do you handicap these overseas games? Because there's really no way of telling. I mean, sometimes these games aren't even talent based. I mean, we just saw this past week Georgia Tech beat FSU outright as a huge dog in Ireland. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Uh, the, you know, the Eagles are two and a half point favorites because they have the better roster, I guess, but not by a lot. 
Green Bay played fantastic down the stretch last year. Eagles played horrendous down the stretch last year. Total of 48 and a half. Game in Brazil, different body clock. All those things are in the handicap, I suppose, for next Friday night. Yeah, you know, I used to stay away from the London games, you know, 100%. And now it's become such commonplace in the NFL uh, that you have to, you know, sometimes throw out the the question mark about travel. Now, this one's obviously different going to Brazil. Uh, and I think it is a factor. Um, but, you know, just handicapping the game on paper and taking that out of the equation, the Eagles have and have taken some money here. I believe they were just a one point favorite not that long ago. And now they've gone to two and a half. And I would kind of treat this one the same way, Craig. If I can lay less than a field goal, I would be on the favorite here. And, and I think it's a very similar reasoning. I think the Eagles are bound to improve off of that second half of the season last year where they were really awful. You know, you look mm -hmm. at some of their numbers. Uh, they have Saquon in. They have Vic Fangio in. They, they add draft choices. I think the defense will be improved. Their net rest edge in the schedule goes from 25th. They had a brutal rest advantage on the schedule last year. They go from 25th in the league this year to second. And then their fumble luck. The year before, when they went to, went to the Super Bowl, their fumble luck was 11th. They regressed last year to 22nd. I think all that sets them up for improvement this year. And I think they get started with a win here. Green Bay, I think one thing that's going to regress for sure is they were incredibly efficient in the red zone. I think that will fall off. On the flip side, I think their defense gets better. They add a new coordinator. They, they draft very heavy on the defensive side. But their schedule gets more difficult this year. They play a number of better offensive teams this year. I think I think Green Bay remains about neutral with what they did last year. I think Philadelphia improves. I'd lay the two and a half in game one. When's the first uh, podcast launch? When, it, when does it start? Well, it launched last Friday. And episode number two is this Friday. And every okay. Friday thereafter for the rest of the season. All right. Thanks, Brady. I got to download it. Have a great week. <laughs>